In this episode of The Tripod... You will never get any information out of a couple without prompting them. And as a result, you will never satisfy them with your photos. They will never get that wow factor. That's such a good so, point. The shoot list. Thank you, Sean. Welcome to The Tripod. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Tripod, episode Hello, 39. Robert. Excuse me? I said, hello, Ronan. Sean, you're not allowed to interrupt Ronan. We- I'm sorry. It's just he he was so chirpy there on his intro. I had to like say hello back. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. Right, we'll try this again. <laughs> hello and welcome to episode 39. Uh, no. Much better. Of the tripod. Much better. <laughs> Thank you very much. You actually, yeah, yeah. Your, your intro was so <laughs> high pitched and chirpy. It caught me by surprise. <laughs> I, I actually just don't know how to even take this anymore. The, the shenanigans, the uh, the opinions. I just... What episode you know what? <laughs> Episode 39 of the Tripod. Oh, and that's in today's right. episode, there he is. we will be discussing monotone madness, which is a symptom of... Being an absolute legend like I am. The mind yes. you, the youngest house of the tripod, Sean O'Reardon. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 39 of the tripod. This week on the tripod, we won't be introducing the hosts because I don't like them. In today's episode, <laughs> instead, we're going to be putting them on the spot and we're going to be dragging up all of their mistakes and all of their anxieties when it comes to wedding photography. Kev, oh. how are you getting on? So sweating. Right, that's mm-hmm. lovely. Thanks. Sean, how are you getting on? <laughs> I'm uh, doing yeah, quite well. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> this week, <laughs> I'm only messing. Go on, lads. How was your week? Kev, okay, we'll start with you. How are you getting on, man? Uh, yeah, Grant. Like it was the usual kind of lockdown week. Didn't I think I left the house once a day to go to the shop? That was it. Um, still no new PC from Curry's PC World, so they can go and f- themselves. And uh, um, yeah, so that's that's me really. That's my week. I, I've done nothing, like nothing of note at all. Good man, you. yourself. It's always nice to have something to contribute to the weekly podcast. <laughs> uh, these, these days, it's it's literally few and far between. I'm mm. the same. I would yeah. actually start this episode with if anyone else is feeling a bit down or feeling lost or dejected with the current situation, uh, drop us a message. Um, yes. we'll look after you we'll get you back in a good mood and we'll give you something to do we can give you something to work on something to learn we can point in the right direction to to stuff or we can just chat to you um, Sean how was yeah. your shout row good man um, that's a very good shout run. Um we even like if you want to edit raw files or do you know what I mean just send you on a couple of photos to process um, yeah it, 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 it it's really feeling like it's kind of locked down now, isn't it? You know, it's like that. You're like you're as you kind of said your routine. Like I only leave the house again to go to the to go to Dunn's to do the shopping or like when I'm going on my run, like you know. So um yeah, it's mad. Shout out to everyone who joined the Tripod uh, Strava group. There's some some people are putting in some fair effort there week in week out, running, walking. It's it's great to see and a lot of a couple of people messaged me saying. Jesus, it actually motivated me to get up and get out of the house, even if it was for a 20 Deadly. minute walk. Good man, and that, Sean. That's that what your, it's about. your brainchild. Well done. That's what it's about. So, like, if you haven't joined, join away. And it's always motivating to see everyone getting up, getting at it. And um, if, if it motivates you to even get 20 minutes of fresh air a day, well, then that's a lot better than getting none, you know. So, yeah, um, my week was fine. Didn't do a whole lot. Again, just obviously working from home, teaching from home. I uh, went out shooting yesterday, just took the drone up there near the wind farm uh, near my home. And yeah, hoping for some snow in the morning so I'll go out. And yeah, that. that's just that's the dream, isn't it? Like I want to wake up to a blanket of snow mm. and just get out with the drone because that's what, what I had visioned in my head before I even had a drone, you know what I mean? Yeah. So fingers crossed that happens. Yeah. I mean, by the looks Tennis of things. Tennis courts in the snow, is it? Tennis courts in the snow, man. Ba- b- basketball <laughs> court is next. Make it happen, Gav. I it's believe happen. in you. Just there's no one in my five K though. I don't think you know what I mean. That's the only problem. Because mm. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Yes. <laughs> did you see Except on the news for when you fly your drone into stuff? And... Did you yeah, see on the news that a man a was fined and rightly fined for he was going climbing Karen Tool this morning? Uh, this morning is the twenty third of the fourth of January, so we're recording this on the twenty third of January. The guards find him. He wasn't. He wasn't within his five K. 
but also he had no hiking gear on him and it's Karen Tool. Like, the devil's that like the snow the ice I mean not only are you putting your own life in danger you're putting the lives of Kerry Mountain Rescue in danger and like he was rightly so he was fined it was ridiculous like yeah people need to just week, there was seven stop. lads seven or eight lads up there on Two the devil's weeks. ladder yeah yeah they went up like and like lads I done the devil's like the devil's ladder is not nice to climb like in any condition never mind in like you need crampons literally and you would almost I go as far as say you'd need to be roped up nearly do you know what I mean like proper to climb it in oh you in would this, in the snow yeah in these conditions like so um yeah that was just uh that was a ridiculous piece of news I saw there this morning like people are just people are wild people yeah, are wild yeah like I just well, look, I mean I understand people look because look this lockdown is tough we know that we all get yeah. that and you know as photographers especially landscape photographers as well getting out is probably that only kind of break from reality that you have yeah but you know it's just just don't <laughs> like that's all I can I can just don't do it for so many reasons if not financially, because I've known loads of people who've gotten fined so far, yeah. um, and like the guards are like they're they're checking addresses now. They're they're actively looking for proof the of address and stuff. Yeah. Um. So it's just not worth it, lads. Just stay at home, yeah. and you know, explore your five k. I'm sure you've got stuff around. If not, try macro or try something. Try something at home. Like just don't don't do it. Yeah. yeah there's there loads of other options preaching. as well. <laughs> but um. Yeah, there has been a lot of bad news the last week or so, but there's been some good news in a way. Um, I've been getting a lot of messages. Now, I have disabled my Instagram account because I'm getting bombarded with wedding inquiries and all sorts of other things. So I'm kind of taking a step back from social media. But um, while my Instagram was active there last week, I got about 15 messages from people who have been asked to shoot weddings. And I was like, they've all, they're all kind of asking the same thing. Any tips? Uh, what would you advise this and that? And I was like, instead of like replying to everyone, I did obviously reply to everyone. But I was like, <laughs> instead of <laughs> replying to everyone, kind of the same thing over and over again, I was like, why don't we discuss it on the podcast? Like what it takes to be a wedding photographer and like some of the mistakes that I've made and Kevin and Sean have made um, in our experience with weddings. Because Lord knows I've made a few and... I, I've actually done a Tony Stark on it and every time I've had a defeat I've added a defense against it remember Tony Stark got hit with the lightning yeah. in, uh, by whiplash yeah. and then he had the defense for when he met Thor and Thor hit him with lightning that's what wedding photography is <laughs> learning oh, from your mistakes like Iron Man <laughs> I think that's the that's... first time we've we've ever referenced the Avengers on this podcast as well by the way which is, is a crying shame to be yeah, honest it is yeah yeah, in episode some, 39. <laughs> I wonder I wonder which one we all are then. So Ronan's Iron Man. Hmm. Sean. I'm all of them. I'm the incredible bulk of Avengers. <laughs> 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 I, I think I'm Captain America. No, no, Sean is Captain America, actually, now that you think about it. Sean you'd is 100% be, um, Captain America. You'd be Rocket. Rocket the from Rocket Raccoon. From Guardians yeah, 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 of the Galaxy. Right, fair enough. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> that's, that's, everyone likes him. Sean would be Bucky, in my humble mm. opinion. I'm anyway, we've already gone off topic before we yeah. even started. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Sean, Cap, Sean is Captain America. Look at him, like chiseled jawline, you know, just wholesome, beautiful Thanks, man. Steph. Always Thanks, does the right thing, never steps out of line, always courteous and polite and beautiful. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm blowing. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm getting hot flushes here. Anyway, photography but, stuff, go. I can't wait for Valentine's Day this year. And Sean is going to put I hope it falls on a Tuesday, does That's, it? I got, this, uh, I got this Valentine's in the post and I don't know who it's from. It just says Kev XOXO in his favorite red crayon. <laughs> my corner. <laughs> anyway right that's enough of that shenanigans lads you have both um, as individuals shot a wedding correct yes Yurt. so the big question that a lot of the people asked me this week was um, any tips for shooting the wedding and I, on all occasions I was like bring it back there's a lot to do before you get there 
So yeah. that is that is look at how long is a piece of string kind of question, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Well, it's kind. It's kind of. It's rushing in. Only fools rush in, as they say. So it's there's a lot of things you should do before you've even shot the wedding. Um. And I'm gonna call this in the beginning. Um. So when you first make contact in the hotel trade, there's something called pre-joining, which is considered in all the reviews, which is before a couple has even made a booking with you, how their experience is um, with the hotel itself. So in terms of what your website looks like, how professional you are, um, stuff like that, all of that is considered in a hotel's rating. And it's no different in wedding photography because if you don't make a good first impression um, or have all of your ducks in a row at the very beginning, it will come back to bite you at the very end because you, you will have ruined the entire experience for you and the couple before it's even started. So, um, Kevin, we'll start with you for yes. the wedding you did. What did you do in the beginning? And what do you think you could have done differently? This is a bit uh, kind of... Oh, um, what did I do in the beginning? So, obviously, I met with... Uh, in, and actually, I've done two two full weddings. In both instances, I, I met with the groom, uh, with the with the potential bride kind of lurking in the wings. Um did he have yeah, a choice like her? The witch? With the potential bride in the yeah, wings. Yeah, surely, surely it was the bride. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because like, she wasn't married at the time, was it? Like, you know what I mean? Um, the bride the, to know, be, yeah, but the, the bride the to be, said potential it. bride, whatever, like whatever. Um, so he was discussing the photographer before he engaged. <laughs> he was like, right, I'm, I'm going to find, I'm going to find a woman in the next five years. Right, here's my plan. I'm going to find a woman. I'm going to marry her, and you're going to talk be about the, the horse before the cart or the cart before ah, the sure, horse. Like, optimistic. Uh, he knew what he wanted, and he went and got it. Um, no, so I met with the with the the groom to be uh, and the, the bride to be was kind of lurking in the wings and kind of drifted in and out in both instances. Um, just because obviously I wouldn't consider myself a wedding photographer, um, obviously. And it was just more so, I actually declined the first one when I was first asked. Uh, my friend Peter, I said no three times. And he was just like, I, I, I want you to do it. Like, I really want you to do it. I was just like, I don't want to you know, ruin your wedding. So like, no, I'm not doing it. Um, but he persisted <laughs> and he asked me, like, he was like, look, it's going to be a personal favor. Like, oh, I'm asking you, like, they're like, you know, we have money. If we wanted a, a professional wedding photographer, we could get a professional wedding photographer. Um, but we want you to do it. So I was like, look, I can't say no to that. And can I, like, you know, talk about guilt trip. So got guilted into it. And, um, I was kind of met, just met with them and, and kind of asked them like, what, what did they expect? You know, because I was going into this blind, obviously I'd spoke to Ronan about, about this one beforehand. Um, and you know, I was going of going into a blind essentially. It was just like, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm fairly out of my depth here. Um, and it was, it was grand, you know, like it kind of, they, they said, look, we want, you know, laid back, candid, um, you know, very little posy shots, you know, maybe take off the cutting the cake and that kind of stuff. But realistically, they just want me to kind of document the day almost, um, which put my mind at ease because that was that was that was quite nice because you know I don't know how to pose people. I don't know how you know like I, I, I that's not my cup of tea. So I don't have, don't yeah. know how to do that. Um, so like when I when I met with Peter and he said that like that was perfect, you know. And then I met the bride and. I think it was weird because I didn't know the bride at all. Like I'd never met her once. And when I met her then, she was so cool. She was like, yeah, look, you just want like photos, you know, just to remember the day. And that, that like relaxed me straight away. So then kind of going into the day, I wasn't as on edge. Which is, yeah. which is good. Yeah. Gotcha. That makes sense. Sean, would, would you concur with that experience? Yeah, definitely. The first solo wedding I done was a friend again, similar to Kevin, and they actually got married in America, so I didn't have a chance to sit down with like the hotel or anything, and I even get in contact with them beforehand. So my scoping out was a day before the wedding when I arrived in America. Um, again, it was just we just want photos to remember the day taken on a decent camera, and we know what you're doing. And I fully say it like that. I like I get asked to do quite a few weddings from people around local, and I'm like, okay, look. I, I'm a landscape photographer. You know that first and foremost. Like I don't do weddings. They're like, yeah, we know that. Do you know? So I always make it totally clear that I am not a wedding photographer. I've only done two anyway. Um, 
but yeah, it, 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 he was like, look, we just want a few photos of the day. Again, I don't know how to pose people. Um, yep. same, same as Kevin. So I just, it, it relaxed me, like, you know. Um, my second one, they were so relaxed. They hardly even wanted photos at the end. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were so relaxed. Like, literally, they, they didn't want anything. No house prep. Just church, small field reception. That was it. Um, no, that was a COVID wedding. So maybe it was just, it was obviously more low key, but... Yeah. Um, See, I've torn down weddings. Like I've torn down, and I always direct them to you around. And obviously, yeah. so I just say, "Here, look. Like, yes, I can take photographs, and I've taken photographs at weddings, and I can, you know, I could do that for you. But, you know, if you want a wedding photographer, a there's only one person. There's only one person to go to. Yeah. Um, and I always say, literally, anytime I get a message saying, "Hi, can you like do my wedding?" Because I get like random ones on Facebook and Instagram, along with people I know. And I literally start every single message go, hi, thanks a million for that. I just want to start off by saying I am not a professional wedding photographer. Um, you know, I, I can recommend some if you want. I, I say some, it's always around. Yeah. And then I say, you know, think about that and get back to me. And, and I don't go into anything else. It's just like, I'm not a professional. Here's someone I recommend. But if you do still want me to, you know, talk, if you want to talk about it, yeah, let me know. And then I'll get into it. But I just, it's not... I, you see, I don't know. you have both, and I took a punt on this with no knowledge of what you would both say, but you have both said pretty much the exact same thing. And from a professional point of view, it gives me anxiety to think that the couple told you what they want and you just went with it. Yeah. So if you are of thinking of shooting a wedding or you're asked to shoot a wedding, the very first thing you need is you need to tell the couple exactly what is what. And by doing so, there can be no hardship in the end. And it's vitally important from stage one. Kevin, you said there, they just want the day documented. They're easy going. Yeah. Sean, you said the same. Yeah. I just want the day documented. I'm easy going. I don't want to be rude, but that means they don't want to spend a lot of money on wedding photography and they're happy with what they get. But yep. yeah. there's only so far you can go in terms of couples being nice people. Because as we know, humans... They have their insatiable desire. They have their own taste. They have certain things in life they might like. And there is every opportunity that even if they're really laid back at the start and they tell you it's grand, whatever happens, happens, you know, there is every opportunity. They will not be happy with the photographs. Yeah. So oh, from, absolutely. From the get go, you need to outline your shoot list, uh, your package, what your package entails, whether it be pre-ceremony coverage, morning coverage, uh, ceremony, at what stage. If you have a single photographer, you will be with the bride, what time you'll be with the groom. If the groom is getting ready in Tala and the bride is getting ready in Wexford and you've one photographer, how are you going to manage that? You need to go through all of those little details and you need to put it down in black and white that I will shoot pre-ceremony coverage for the bridal party all the way up to the ceremony cover the ceremony from that point I'll stay with the bride and groom throughout the rest of the day the second thing you need to do is you need to uh, put your price out there and this is vitally important do not work for free like, especially in the coming year what will happen is a lot of wedding photographers have gone out of business and there's yeah. others that are struggling who potentially won't have had a payday for two years maybe the way things yeah. are going we don't know so you cannot go in there and work for 300, 400, 500 euro. You also can't go in there and work for 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 euro. The, put yourself in a bracket where you are pricing fairly, not undercutting the pros, but also not overcharging for your ability. So that sounds like there's nowhere you can be, but there is a happy medium in there somewhere that you will find. I feel like so, I found like I I, fe I found that price as in because I, I kind of know what a professional would charge. Obviously, there's the likes of yourself and, and a few others that I'd know. Um, but I also know to value my my time, my skill, and you know my worth. And also one huge thing, also taught to me by Ronan Hardin Downs, uh, is that. Like shooting a wedding is all well and good, but it's not just the 12 hours at a wedding that you're charging for. Yeah, exactly. Not yeah. at all. Yeah. That's that, that that's the part I found the hardest 
was sitting down and sifting through over to nearly 2,000 photos and trying to narrow those down. Oh my God, it just, when I was there sitting there doing that call, I was like, thank God I'm not a wedding photographer. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I just, I don't have the golf, the graph for this at all. See, Somewhere. I really enjoy it. I love people. So like, and yeah, I think we weddings, that. like weddings being like the happiest. Love trees. Love trees too. And he you loves know, leaves, <laughs> <so he> does. <laughs> but like weddings are like, it's just, it's one of those days where every single person you encounter is just in yeah. top form. You know what I mean? Like everyone's in great form and I, I buzz off that. So I love weddings, but dear God, they're stressful, aren't they? Oh As a photographer. Oh my God. I, I love them. Pressure yeah. makes diamonds. Yeah, true. True Pressure indeed. But like, I think you need, you need to have a certain je ne sais quoi about you, I think, to be a, um, oh yeah, you need to be a small little yeah. charmer, like yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You know, you need, as you said, you need to go, go to people. You need to be a. People is that where I'm like, going wrong? Is it? <laughs> no, that's why. That, that's why that's you're why nominated you're for wedding it. photographer of the year. By the way, yeah. we haven't mentioned that on the podcast yet, have we? No, have we? ladies and gentlemen, no. Ronan Harden Downs has been nominated and short for wedding photographer of the year. Yeah, I'm now, a finalist. Yeah, he's There's a finalist. And to put that into perspective, right? Seven other photographers. Was it last year? I can't remember what year we are. Two, essentially, yeah, last year, Ronan decided to go professional and go full time. And within his first year, because this, you know, rolled into last year, has been nominated and now shortlisted as a finalist for Wedding Photographer of the Year. Like, that's, that's sensational, my friend. Thanks, guys. And uh, sorry I, it's taken so long to mention because we're very proud of you. I, I've also been a... Uh, a finalist for newcomer of the year as well. Oh, well, there oh we yeah. Go. Well done. Just to give myself another little pat um, on the back. No, well, look, you deserve that. What I was that's, saying there. that's awesome. Sorry, yes, let's continue. Thank Apologies. you, Gabe. I just want to, you, you, know what? you deserve it. It's deserved. Uh, as much as it killed me to 100% say. 100% deserved. scoundrel. So I'm terrified that I'm just going to lose my train of thought now, though, because, like, no. you're hearing news to chat then, and I'll just be like, oh, daddy, did you see this happen the other day? And I'll just be <laughs> gone. <laughs> Straight down the rabbit hole. Squirrel! But, um, on the yes, so the second point, uh, money, you have to charge and you have to charge fairly. How do you price yourself? What I would recommend is look at your whatever job you're working or your previous job, and take a week's wages, and take ha half that and add it back on. So a week and a half's wages, and price that for the wedding. The reason I think that's good is you'll spend roughly six hours a day. And I'm going to tell you some software at the end that will help you speed up your call, Sean, that you were on about. Yeah, absolutely. But um, you'll spend about six hours a day for about a week doing the edit. Um, if you can streamline it with the tips I give you at the end. So a week and a half's work okay. will encompass the day out there and your time. Uh, the likelihood is you're not going to want the price for your equipment because if it's only one wedding you're doing on the off chance, you're not going to charge for the full amount of your equipment. You're yeah. also not going to charge 5% the price of your equipment, which is I charge 7% on, on a wedding based on me thinking I'm getting 70 weddings a year to replace all of my equipment. So the value nice. of all of my equipment is 7% on each wedding. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the money side of things. The third and most vital thing you need is a contract. Can now, we just go back to the money side of things real quick? I'd just love to. Yeah, because a couple of couple of bits on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the the point you made about the, obviously the percentage thing for yourself and like as a professional, that's that's a really clever thing because obviously the shutter count alone on a professional wedding photographer's camera, I'd imagine it's disgustingly large. You know what I mean? Like if you're doing seventy weddings a year on one camera, like I can only imagine. I can only yeah, imagine. You're, you're shooting two cameras at the same time, so you don't yeah. have to change lens. So you've got a 70 to 200, a 24 to 70, and two a top spec full frame mirrorless or DSLRs. So that alone, you're putting, I'd say you'd easily put a minimum of a thousand shots on each uh, camera, yeah. possibly upwards to 3,000 if there's a lot of activity at the wedding. Yeah. Um, like you, you know the way my wedding just flowed. Yeah. Yes. On a, on a wedding like that, beautifully. <laughs> I'm loving these confluence. Gift. The um, that was the best wedding, wedding I've ever like been that, to. 
same and i don't mind saying it because it was just <laughs> deadly <laughs> it was genuinely it was it was perfect from start to finish but on a day like that where it just flows um i've been at weddings like that that are really well planned out and they just the the bride and groom have everything sorted and i took i think i took three and a half thousand shots on one camera and two thousand on the other and there was macro easily two thousand usable shots at the end you know deadly but um what was I saying? Yeah, contract. So contract yes. is vitally Point important. Three. Even if you're shooting a wedding for your best friend, um, your brother or your sister, you must have a contract. It covers would you rock you. up to your brother with a contract? I absolutely would. Would you? Class. <laughs> I shot my cousin's wedding last year and I, I made them sign a contract. Everybody no signs a contract. Um, the next thing then is like, what's in your contract? We actually have a sample contract. Um, that you can use as a template yeah, that if you want to right. just send us an email or a message um, or a DM on any of the socials and we will send it on to you. If you want to, I advise expanding on it. And if you do want to do that and chat with me directly, just let me know and I'll help you build a good contract. But uh, that brings me down. That's kind of the final in the beginning sections of what you do. Obviously, typically you would meet the couple as well. Um, but nowadays I'd advise doing that over zoom or video call and uh, make sure you do make the time to sit down and chat with them because yeah. you don't want to be kind of <laughs> rocking up on the day and not knowing what they look like and being like um are you the bride even if it's like you know it's just awkward <laughs> so yeah. you don't want to do that jesus can you imagine <laughs> but tell me now sean did you have a contract no no did you i didn't even have a shot list bit of <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's going into the next thing I know yeah <laughs> oh, I too yeah. can confirm I did not have a contract I I had text messages asking me would I do it and other text messages saying yes yeah see that's that to me is like it's career suicide before you've even began a career because all it takes is your very first wedding to be a bad review or to end up in court because they're not satisfied with the photographs and yeah. not ah, yeah. only could well, you like, lose thousands of euro you could also lose your reputation immediately so it's absolutely well, like my, my brain wouldn't even go there like i mean i was just thinking you know this is a friend and i know for look i know friends can fall out over this kind of stuff as well so that it was completely naive of me to think that um but like i was like just it's a friend he wants me to take some photographs at his wedding He's outlined that, you know, they don't really care what, what happens as long as, it, you know, the, the day is documented. And, you know, it's just like, yeah, like it's Grant. We'll just go take photos and see what happens, you know. Um, that is very, really naive. I, I get that. Like it's 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 madness. But I, I, I didn't know any different. I'd never done a wedding before. So I was like, yeah, sure. We just go with the flow and see what happens. <laughs> Rowan's probably having madness. anxiety attacks right now. Yeah, I am. Like, like, dying here. <laughs> you can't do that. There's just, there's been so many uh, horror stories. Like, it's really not worth the risk for a piece of paper that all parties have signed that will cover you. It's it's really not worth it. And as I said, we will happily look after you with our template and I'll help you build it up if needs be. The next yeah, thing I think Sean, for me as well. To, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just, just going to say, like, with, with regards to the contract, like, I think for me was just like literally lack of knowledge about this. Like, so I, I didn't know, like I didn't even know like a professional would have a contract. You know what I mean? Like, at that at that time, I, did, I just thought it was an agreement. People spoke about it and said, yeah, look, that little let's do that. You see, and that's that's one of the problems. There's, mm. there's a certain uh, excitement you get when you're asked to shoot a wedding. And I know I sound a bit doom and gloom saying bad things can happen and all that. But even if you're only doing one wedding, you have to cover your bum because... Yep. The horror stories do happen and it, it's not worth happening to you. Yeah. Um, Sean, as you said there, the shoot list. Yeah. So, Kevin, tell me, I want you to break the day down into segments. Just real quick and then Sean do the same. Tell me what are the important segments of a wedding day? Okay, so important segments uh, that I've kind of captured as groom getting ready, bride getting ready, arrival as in arriving to the ceremony so kind of with that part you'd focus on more so the bride and the bridesmaids and that kind of stuff um the ceremony itself uh the meet and greet after ideally you'd leg it out and get a bit a couple of posy shots if if possible um 
then you would have obviously you kind of you let people have their dinner in peace and um you know a couple of candid shots after dinner and then first dance really that's kind of i think that's so i don't think i forgot that in there really. and no, sean how would you feel on this matter uh i would add in a couple there now that go, Kev, go on um, didn't mention the father of the bride and that's a very important one to get the first look when he comes through the door um the mother of the bride is a very important person at the wedding um children are very good folks on a wedding they photograph really well oh uh, yeah but um, he asked us kind of like the, the stages not the shots you know what i mean these, like these are stages though and this is the point i was going to make fair enough i was going to say well i said ceremony and that covers all of that though doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> no, um, not at all. <laughs> and I was going to mention that the bride is the most I have learned this the bride is the most important person at the wedding day 100% the groom and anyone who, who the disagrees the groom, groom won't groom realistically they're like yeah look we'll get a few photos I want to go back in there and drink my pint okay do you know what 100%. I mean and from my experience of grooms the bride however like you make sure that you photograph her and photograph her well um, that was always the, I didn't make out a shot list but I knew that was the golden rule from, from you running nailed it now what Kevin said there is exactly what I wanted to speak about with the shoot list yes you, would, you wouldn't put a shoot list in your pocket now that lists out the, the whole day in depth like that but what you would be aware of is the day as it unfolds so you need to know what pre-ceremony is which is with the bride or the groom if they're both getting ready in the same hotel or within say five kilometers of each other then that's grand you can drive in between that's then the you dream. have pre-ceremony which is uh, the groom will already be at the the church or the venue and the bride will be arriving there so you need to get firstly the bride's arrival there her outside with all the bridesmaids inside then the groom will be waiting at the top of the aisle and um, typically he won't look back down the aisle so you need to have your angles worked out there the next thing you need to have done before that actually is you need to talk to the priest or the celebrant you need to ask them if they're okay with flash photography because if you need to use a flash uh, in some churches and some other civil venues flash is banned so make sure you reach out before the wedding and you have all of that information after that then it's the first time the couple have been together for the whole day so you have the couple together outside typically um now not in COVID times but typically they'll stand outside as they leave the church first and then everyone will follow and they'll kind of do a meet and greet with everybody i love that then, bit you know that that's that's a lovely part of the wedding i think it's I think a great you capture, it's, you get you all capture the a lot yeah. of emotion and joy. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's like, because nice obviously the groom has been like nervous and sweating the whole Everyone time. Everyone breathes a sigh of relief. Yeah, but like, and then he, he starts seeing his mates and he starts seeing his family and it's just like, you know, that's when you get pure, I think pure joy is captured at that moment. Like that's, that's a really nice part of the wedding and that's probably yeah, that's, under, it's probably undervalued, I think, that part. I agree. Yeah, that's the time for the long lens. And yeah, by that get out stage, of the way. you should That's know it. who is who based on the morning coverage. So on the morning coverage, you'll be listening to see who's granddad, who's the uncle who's over from America, and you'll have picked it all out and you'll be watching for those things. Yeah, um, yeah so you have the meet and greet thing. Then you make time for your photos where Kev says, ideally, you'd get a couple of photos in. We'll come back to that. <laughs> then you get back to your reception <laughs> oh, venue. Oh, Kev, you're in trouble. <laughs> that, that was harsh. <laughs> Some, okay, some couples don't want to. Some couples that don't want to pose. That was such a teacher comment right there. Some oh, couples I'm don't want to pose, man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> You're a trouble queen. It doesn't yeah. matter if they don't want to get pose. Get your journal at the desk, buddy. <laughs> I must listen to Ronan Harden dance. <laughs> Sorry, Ronan. Now, yeah, you go back to your reception venue. That's when you leave everyone alone and you go into the the room and you photograph the cake, any decorations on the table. Um, if they have a seat plan or placeholders um, or little gifts or anything like that on tables, you photograph all that then before anyone has gone into that room and absolutely destroyed the place. After that, then you leave them have their dinner, as Kevin said. Good morning, Kevin. Yeah. And then you come back in after dinner 
some venues will do like a, a fake cake cutting uh, before the dinner um, where I they like don't the fake actually cake cut cutting. the cake. I prefer the, the on the moment. But do yeah, you? It's, they, you do the... I've lost my place now. Yeah, you might Sorry. do a fake cake cutting, you might not. Then it's either speeches straight after dinner or straight after dessert. So there'll be one or the other that you have to get. And then if they have entertainment, like typically a hypnotist or something like that, will come in at that stage and then you first dance. So everything I've talked about there, are you going to have a big list in your pocket covering all of those things? How long did that take me to say? Five minutes? <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, because you're going to be like, taking the paper out of your pocket and while you're having a look at your big long list, you could have missed an absolutely portfolio image there of the bride hugging her mother or something. Do you know what I mean? So... Yeah, no, you're not gonna have. Yeah, you're not gold gonna have star for Sean over here. I forgot to mention the speeches in my in my reeling off of things, but that's once again speeches is one of the best parts of a wedding to shoot. I think, um, I think speeches really really helps them when you've got a second shooter, because you know when you've got a second photographer at a wedding, you can get also you can get like the people giving the speech and you can get the crowd's reaction or whatever they're called the fans or whatever you call them in non-concert <laughs> in a non-concert <laughs> setting you can get the fans reaction you know what I mean um, can I ask yeah, a that... question go please Ronan um, and I don't know how you this up. lined up for later on in the episode but you mentioned there um, that's when it's after the ceremony and it's the, everyone's having a meet and greet that's the time for the long lens Maybe it would be a good kind of a little discussion to talk about possibly the different lenses that could be used at different stages of the day. Maybe. Yeah, could would, do that. Um, like literally, it, like five, like just maybe touch on that. Like, is that that's something that I always thought, oh God, should I be changing lenses here or what should I be using? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I typically bring two bodies, as I said at the start there, because... If you have to stop to change lens halfway through the ceremony or something like that, then as you say, Sean, you've lost your shots. That's yeah. You're not getting that time back. So what I usually do is I just do laps of the church and same with the speeches. I just do laps of the room. So when I'm close enough to use the 24 to 70, I do that. And when I'm down the back of the church, I'll use the 70 to 200. Another nice thing you can do is use the 70 to 200 focus on your foreground and then get real close to it so that you have the bride and groom out of focus in the background. So if they have like decorations on the side of the seats or whatever, you'd get them nice and sharp, the flowers. Lovely shots. Um, Because that's actually, that does work into this point a bit because what your shoot list should hold is... Not that entire day as I rattled off there, but it is good to know exactly what to expect on a full day wedding. But what you want to do, and again, I'll give uh, out a sample of this, is you want to know, is there any heirlooms um, on the bride side and the groom side? Examples being cufflinks for the groom. The bride might have her grandmother's um, necklace or rosary beads or something like that. She could have a hair clip. Uh, as Sean said, the bride is the most important so on the morning Fact. the first thing on your shoot list is the bride's heirlooms and um, her dress is included in that her jewelry all those kind of things her shoes. shoes you want to have all them photographed in the bag before she's gone to put them on because once she has them on you're not getting those photos back uh, the other thing on your shoot list is you want names and every couple says to me, sure, you won't know who anyone is. It's like, yeah, but I'll pick it up. So when yeah. you have granddad is Kevin. So when I hear everyone going, ah, Kevin. Uh, is that right, somebody the oldest member of the podcast? The hilarious oh, lad in the corner. <laughs> yeah, he's the oldest host on the tripod, eh? <laughs> um, <laughs> the next thing on your shoot list uh, is you want their team. And their team will encompass um, like a wedding myself and Sean did their team was yellow and all of the flowers they had like these vibrant yellow roses uh, even the lighting in the church was yellow so the whole Ugh. day we were able say that to was great crack to shoot was it it was dead yeah it's actually what about like yellow lighting in the church I'm just curious how that affected skin uh, it wasn't and like a luminous yellow highlighter uh, like. okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was cool but yeah it was it's cool. um 
when you know the team, you can incorporate the team into pretty much every shot along the way. So that's yeah. another thing on the shoot list. The shoot list isn't there to be stuck to religiously, but it's to have these little tiny bits of knowledge that might seem like nothing that you can incorporate throughout the day. The team is um, is massive when it comes to flowers. So yep. as I said, with the long lens on there, getting a nice close-up shot of the flowers, uh, if you place the rings into the, the flowers with the zoom lens on, get shots like that. It encompasses everything they wanted to see. It has their theme, their rings, their jewellery. Um, that moment means something to them. It all comes together in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make yeah, sense? The way I look so at a shoot list is, <laughs> like, because the shoot list is the the do not miss shots, almost. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd, like I'd, you, I'd, uh, yeah like I'd agree with that. You're going to have certain, certain things that you just, you need to sort. You're like, you just do that. And that's the bare minimum. If you get that, you've got a happy couple and everything else is a, a pleasant bonus, I think, you know? That actually lines up perfectly with kind of where I was slowly segueing to. Oh, that's and nice that's, considering we what, hadn't a clue what this episode was about. So that's that this wasn't planned. <laughs> obviously myself and John had no idea. So lovely. Go ahead. But where do you get your shoot list from? Where do you get you? the jewellery and the names and all that? I, I would say from doing a wedding with you, yeah. I've learned everything from yeah. from nearly shadowing you. <laughs> Same. Um but you would that would be sorted. That, that, <laughs> that would be sorted. A very helpful answer for those that won't that, get a chance to shadow you, but <laughs> <laughs> that would be sorted prior to the wedding. That would be sorted in that first meeting, I would imagine. Or maybe the second meeting, whatever. But Kevin is correct. Would, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, like that. That's I suppose that that's part of the of the reason for the meet. Especially I got, as I said, I've been lucky or or unlucky. Now I've been lucky enough that the weddings I've done have been for lovely friends. Um, so I've never had to like have that meeting with a stranger or a meeting with you know a strange a couple that I've never met before. Um, because like, look, I'm not shy, so like, I'm not gonna like it's, it'll be grand. But you know, I, I like the fact that like with mates. They can just be like, they can talk to you straight, as in they'll tell you like, this is the shoe list. But this, this is, is the want. thing, Kevin, dear. They don't. Because as you alluded to at the start, you were told that it's grand. We don't really mind what we get. This is very So true. you get your shoot list at the very start in the conversations you have with the couple. But a couple will not give you a shoot list. And that's why I will give you a template to fill out because you need to prompt them. But you don't yeah. get it off them on the first time you speak to them because you will come to them with a shoot list and you'll go through it and you'll ask them and they'll go, um, yeah, I suppose a granny's hair band and um, yeah, that's about <laughs> it. You make it your mission to meet up with them or ring them a week later or whatever, a week before the wedding, the next chance you get and you go through the shoot list again or even email them a copy to fill out and I guarantee you it will triple or quadruple in size of things they want shot. And then again, whether it's two or three days before uh, the wedding, you send it to them again and they will fill it out again and it will either double or triple in size. You will never get any information out of a couple without prompting them. And as a result, you will never satisfy them with your photos. They will never get that wow factor. That's such a good so point. The shoot list. Thank you, John. The shoot yeah. list is... It's not gospel. It's not like the Testament written in stone. It's an absolutely vital p piece of paper or knowledge that you can literally hang on to. And you'll find that you don't even need to look at the shoot list because when you've repetition, 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 when you deal with the couple and they say things and they go, oh, actually, uh, you're going to twig it on the day. If you don't enter into that conversation, as the day goes on, you're just going to find yourself standing around pointing your camera at the ground. When you have a shoot list, you will increase your yield of photos tenfold because you'll yeah, go, that's a great show. Oh, that yellow flower there. If I get that blurred out with her shoes in the foreground, that has her team, her shoes. Um, and on her shoes, she has a lace from her granny's corset that she got married in tied into it. <laughs> it all comes together that way. And you'll actually take yeah, yeah. better photographs as a result. Does that make sense? That, 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 that's, that's a solid tip, my friend. That, you like, because, because you can, like, at a wedding, like, especially the first wedding, I 
I had taken so I took um, like honestly a million photos like legit no uh, obviously not legit but like I was <laughs> oh, maybe overcompensating because I was just like right, I just kept I just kept snapping like literally just kept going um because I had no guidance I had no rhyme or reason I had no like no idea what I was doing that's a good shoot, point actually yeah you'll just get lit. lost I literally I, I, I mean I was literally snapping for 14 hours you know what I mean like it was constant because I didn't want to miss that and didn't know what I was doing didn't know what was expected so it was just you know that old saying throw enough <clears throat> and it, you know add a wall <laughs> and some of it would stick mm. yeah that, that that was me at a wedding like I took so many photos and that's why it took me three months to deliver them I think because I, I had to go through like yeah you, you see you got your thousands of photos stuck in a corner or stuck in a situation where you didn't equip yourself with the tools to photograph yep. that wedding so the simple Absolutely. things meet the couple first do the shoot list next point then mr queveen your couple yes, didn't like to pose sean did yeah. your couple like to pose uh my first one did yeah they were happy enough to pose second one absolutely not no it was like trying <laughs> to draw blood from a stone like, okay literally. now i'll ask another question do you know how to pose your couples nope <laughs> not I very mean, well no, like, I, I was, I was it, proud of myself though I did I, st- I was like look sorry but we have to go out and get proper images you know with yeah. no crowder and I'm sorry but we have to get some post shots so I put my foot down there and said no we have to get these do you know what I mean so they were kind of saying ah sure look you probably got a lot already I'm like no I, I want to get these ones so I did put the foot down then but do I know how to pose nah so I'm a let, nah I'm a landscape photographer no so I, mean, I don't I, I mean <laughs> look, I know there's paid, like <laughs> so what um, do you do like, in that situation when your couple doesn't like to pose and to be fair no couple likes to pose they've just gotten fair. married they've been rushing fair, to fair. get ready all morning they're up to 90 they don't want to do it trust me so they don't want to pose you don't know how to pose your couple Kevin as you said hopefully you'll get a few shots so what if they don't make time for you this is the, the key thing. These shots are some of the most important shots of the day. Most photographers' portfolios are built with these shots from this yeah, section of the day. That's fair. So that's a good you point. turn what some couples could dread if they don't like posing, they don't like being in front of a camera. You turn that into a positive that works for you. So every couple, um, unless they're booking a specific artistic wedding photographer who does a certain style, most couples will be a fan of traditional or documentary style wedding photography. So what your couple wants is just coverage of the day. The posing shot, they're not that into. So the simplest and best way to get the best results at this stage of a wedding is say to the couple, come on, we go for a walk. Your couple wants to get out of the situation. They're emotionally charged. They just got married. They're being crowded by everyone. They're going to love a few minutes away. So you literally say, let's go for a walk and you just do a lap of wherever you are and you just encourage them for the first, say, minute or two as you walk along, just encourage them to take a break. You're like, breathe, it's over now. And you just stay in the background as as you asked earlier, Sean, with your long lens, snap a couple of shots on the zoom lens because they're going to kiss. They're going to chat to each other. They're going to hug. They're going to hold hands. It's the first moment that they're alone together. You don't have to pose them. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is have it prior agreed that they're going to give you 20 minutes or half an hour at this time and literally say, go for a walk. And you would be amazed at the photographs that will pop up out of that. As the walk continues, you'll see that the couple will then kind of go, oh, we're meant to be getting our photos taken and you've already got a load of photos taken. So you just go to them, prompt them, did you get married today? Or like, say the groom does something silly or he's brought a pint of Guinness with him or something, point that out. Do silly things, don't force anything, but just let their emotion drive the situation because they're going to be so pumped, so in love that you're literally just going to push them away from everything where that can come out. You don't need to do anything. Do you remember the lovely wedding myself and yourself uh, shot for Kira and Carl? Yes. Remember when we brought them out? Yes. That was exactly like that. Like we it's had so many day, shots. Yeah. 
Yeah, we had so many shots before they even realised we had kind of been taking shots almost. So, you know, it was it was exactly like that. But remember, Carl Carl brought his sunglasses out, and it, it wasn't exactly like a really sunny day. But it was just that's Carl's personality, and um, some of those shots were like absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you, you used the one point eight on, didn't you? Yeah, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah, so that's um, nifty, fifty fifty. Lots of blur. Yeah. Yeah. I had I think I had the 70 to 200 on yeah it was, or did um, I? no I had the 24 to 70 at the time so between the two of us we were getting the sun was low in the sky Sean it was a, a summer wedding it was about 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening so you were getting the sun just coming down nice and low you were getting lots of bokeh balls we were getting yeah. side light the bride's dress was lighting up and literally all we did was follow them around uh, and like yeah, okay, like you've was, seen an action like magic. Yeah, there was there was probably one instance of posing when they stood under the arch of a door, uh, and then that was really it, wasn't it? Like it was it was literally just they were just chatting, walking around, and we were just taking photographs of them, and it was it was brilliant. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, geez, they were that that was a lovely wedding. Like I almost forgot about that I, one. I'd forgot I had forgotten about that as well. Yeah, yeah that was but gorgeous. That, it just goes to show it's. Um, that even the posing shot we did at the end, Kev, where we kind of we got to a point and stopped. They yeah. did a couple of poses, but then it's like the the photos that make the cut are never the posed ones. So Absolutely. as you walk 100%. around, you can stop at a focal point like that. Say there's a nice stone arch or a nice tower, or I don't know a bench underneath a tree or something like that. You can stop at those points and do the pose shots. But then, like if you tell a couple, right, got those shots. Uh, just give it a sec or like just interact or just chat away amongst yourselves there for a sec yeah. keep snapping as they do that and like, you'll get candid unposed natural results without having to do any work and it's 100%. the results are phenomenal and once again that's something you did at that wedding because remember we, we, we kind of got them to pose at that archway and then the shots I've seen from there were actually the ones probably 50 seconds after they posed you know what I mean yeah, so, I hate that say cheese thing. The, the stop and no, it. yeah, no one likes it. Like you know, when when, when yeah. I think was it something that Peter Hurley said is like when someone says say cheese, you know, you just don't like, or something along the lines yeah. of that. Like, or was it yeah. no one got better looking on tree? Is that what he said? That's what he said. Yeah, yeah, um, like that, yeah. yeah, yeah. No one poses <laughs> better on tree. It's like yeah, man, that's so true. It's Such it's so true point. though. You know, like people don't. I mean, if anything, if you got them at one or two, it'd be better because you hear that and you go mm, and like you just don't mm. it's like yeah stiff it up like and yeah it's a, it's a strange one really but that, that's why I really think the, the the candid side of things and as I said like 50 seconds after you, you'd posed uh, the couple the, 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 the better shots came coming towards the end of the wedding then Ronan what are you um, you obviously have to give people breathing but I think that's very that's a very important point so you have to know when to back off like don't you and kind of leave <laughs> yeah. people mingle and have their obviously have their food and stuff but like you have to know when to back off and just blend it and leave them and get the camera out of their out of their face for a while as well yeah you have to have a level of discretion discretion that's, um, the, that's the word and that's yeah. throughout the day you kind of have to do that but there is a couple of key moments throughout the day where you make yourself scarce uh, the, the main one being the dinner and then the next one is there's a, a kind of a moment in between speeches and dancing where they'll typically clear the floor of tables and set up the dance floor you don't want to be getting stuck in between people trying to go to the bar or trying to go to the toilet or anything like that you want to be gone because if people see you especially women if they see you yeah. hovering near a toilet or something with a camera, um, they, you can make someone feel so uncomfortable that it'll ruin off a dodgy vibe. the vibe. They'll go and speak to someone. Uh, they'll say something to their boyfriend. Their boyfriend's had a few drinks. He'll threaten you. Like it sounds like it's being dramatic, but it yeah. does happen. So you need yeah. to be yeah. aware that these people are out to enjoy themselves and you've got two cameras hanging off you. You don't want to put anyone under any pressure, especially after an emotionally charged day and when there could be drink involved. And remember that one wedding we did, Kevin, where you chased that poor young woman around? 
Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> you looked like you were drifting off there. So I, like, I apologize what? if this is a very boring episode. Is that? Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> I'm loving this. I was very I'm perplexed gonna, there. I think I'll try and wrap it up quickly with a few quick tips, um, and then we'll get to the the a few softwares and stuff at the end that might help. Oh you. yeah, okay. But um. Yeah, there's important people on the day that you need to make friends with. The maid of honor and the yep. best man. They know who is who. You don't know who everyone is when it comes to doing group shots and stuff like that. They'll be able to go and pick people out for you. Um, they'll be basically like your SEAL team. They'll be yeah. Operation, go and find Great Uncle Harry. And it's go, go, go. And then great Uncle Harry went back upstairs and took his suit off. So he used to put his suit back on. That has actually <laughs> happened. <laughs> it's Why did Harry have a suit thing. off, lads? <laughs> There's always one uncle. Sometimes it's the father of like, yeah. either the bride or groom. They'll go back to their room and take their suit off. And it's like, you need to get your photo taken. Like, way out of that, Sharon. It's, uh, <laughs> it happens all the time. Jesus. But you need to have... Um, Contact the priest beforehand. I said this already. Contact the priest beforehand. Make sure if you can use Flash or not, if you need to. Scout out your venue on Google Maps and see, like even just a Google Map check of a church to see is, has it got big windows. And then you'll know whether it'll be dark inside or not. Stuff like that. If you can't actually travel to see it, I would encourage everyone to travel and scout out a venue to begin with. Um, go on to Pinterest and have a look for venues uh, Pinterest can sometimes be better than Instagram and Facebook and that for photographs because brides plan their weddings on Pinterest a lot of the time. Um, you should also encourage your couple if they are planning on Pinterest to make a Pinterest account and ask them to add you to their boards, their pins Aww, and stuff. And you nice. can get like a rolling idea of what their team is. Very good point. Um, Very nice. Thing? Sean, you said something to me there specifically, didn't you? Uh, we should have notes on all this. <laughs> I was on with like, no, I, my last point was just about like backing off, like and have knowing, knowing your places. Um, you were talking about like the most important people to to get to know. Um, uh, I would totally agree with either the, yeah, like both probably the maid of honor and the best man. But from another point of view of when you're trying to, or, if you're trying to organize group shots, it can be an absolute nightmare to try and get Hecht. people are organized. Isn't and, it? Because like, the that boys are over mental. in the corner have a drink, have a chat and like, so you need someone to try and go over and look get in here now like you generally the maid of honor good like get them in here now for a photograph yeah. you know I mean? <laughs> there's always one person missing yeah. though always, always like, no matter yeah. how like there's always but, one and it's the brother or the groom or something you know what I mean yeah. it's vanished. from an organizational point of view like yeah it's it's it's, it's very important yes correct um, SEAL Team 10 is like the best way of referencing I think yeah. <laughs> literally they are the special forces on the day yeah yeah um, Yeah. so my other tip then my final tip uh, for speeches try and get learn who the names are and get between the speaker and who they are mentioning and um, you'll have more time to do this than you think and then you can get these kind of quirky um, both people in the frame uh, one in soft focus one in sharp focus kind of situation but the the final bit of the day then the first dance uh, quite often you're shooting a first dance in a really dark room or the lights are dim and the band has lights and lasers and all this on <laughs> uh, if a band does have lasers on ask them to turn it off uh, more nice. often than not they will because lasers will paint weird colors and blow out highlights on people's faces yeah. and they cannot be recovered uh, not use flash the traditional way for a first dance because your flash will bounce off the ceiling illuminate your couple and the rest of the room will look mucky and washed out because your shutter and your flash has gone so quick that none of the ambient light like the band's lights and that going off will get into the camera instead if you find yourself in a situation where you have to go above ISO 6400 um, now I've quite often gone to 10,000 on the Z6 and had a perfectly acceptable raw file Mm. Typical rule is have your shutter speed double your focal length and yeah. you'll get a sharp shot regardless. But if you find yourself that your camera can't cope and you have to use flash at the first dance, give yourself a long, put it into manual, set it to rear curtain sync flash and it will behave as normal. 
uh, the flash, but instead of firing when you take the picture, it fires when the last shutter closes. So if you go into manual mode instead of aperture or auto or whatever you were shooting on and set a shutter speed of two seconds, what happens is for two seconds, you're letting ambient light into the camera. And for the last one, one twentieth of a second, the flash fires and freezes everything. So by doing that, you can have a lower ISO because you've had a longer shutter speed. Your camera will be pretty much focused on the couple and the last flash will then freeze them and preserve detail. But you've also let in the, lights, the atmosphere, the ambience. So you can even do that with like a, a one second uh, shutter speed kind of thing. Question. The um, landscape photographer looks like his mind is being blown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to start. <laughs> so Sean, he's not hiding behind a curtain with a flash. Uh, just just, just, just um, get that image out of your head right now. The fact it's, uh, I, I don't want to find things. I've heard you talk about this so much, so many times. I still don't get it. Um, if it's a one second shutter speed, is it the flash freezing everything that prevents the photo from being blurry? Yes, it will prevent whatever it hits being blurry. So you'll so have if motion. You, if you imagine, in, would you have motion in the background? Let's say. Yeah. So if you have lights, so you give you that lovely, 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 lovely look. Lovely. Yeah, and it also it makes the image very dynamic because you're getting. If you're photographing two people dancing and you're using a fast enough shutter speed so that they don't blur, then you're kind of eliminating the whole the whole purpose of dancing, which is movement. So yeah. by just freezing the action, and if you just use bounce flash, what you'll find is you'll just freeze them in, in place, even though they could mm -hmm. have been swinging around and having the best time ever. By doing it this way, like even, um, it's like a long exposure with a river, Sean, even one thirtieth of a second, you okay. wouldn't be able to handhold that typically and no. get a sharp shot, but that's enough to let the ambient light in let a bit of the movement in and then the flash fires at the very end and freezes and preserves your detail. So it gives that you that bit of that movement. That is a tip. It's, all, it's similar to, um, do you know when you do a zoom blur? Yeah. And you put, a, put on a slightly yeah, yeah. long exposure and zoom your lens. It's similar to that, but instead of zooming your lens, the people are moving and the flash fires at the end to freeze it all. Because I've seen those shots, you know what I mean? Because obviously weddings, there, there's always lovely lights around and fairy lights and all of that crack. And, um, you know, you see there's like a big line of light movement, but then the couple are like pin sharp. They're, they're gorgeous. Yeah, I have seen that. That's you you cool. can tell that they're dancing. You know what I mean? You, you can, like, you know that for a fact, yeah. they're dancing and having yeah. a good time. Uh, they are fantastic. One other thing on that though, um, if you are using flash like that, do a couple of shots with high ISO first and no flash. Um, try and get a couple in like that, maybe at the start when they're dancing slowly or whatever. But more so, especially if you're working alongside a videographer, because videographers hate flash. It will ruin that section oh, of their video. Yeah. Now, typically they're shooting at 120 frames per second and they're looking for a bit of slow-mo action. If you're giving them, say, a 10 second, five to 10 second gap where possible without flash, that five to 10 second clip will be slowed down to like 20 to 30 seconds, depending on what frame rate they, they go to in post. Right. So be sure to give them five, six, seven seconds here or there so they get their clips as well. Because if you get videographers angry at you, they they hit you with their tripods and stuff. I've like only ever people. worked with one videographer. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I, I don't think I made him angry at all. In fact, I ended up being a, 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 a co-host with him on the podcast. <laughs> hey, That's Sean. a very good point, though. <laughs> That's you know a very I mean? good point so, about the flash they're running. Yeah, it yeah is, that is a very uh, good point. It's tough. It's yeah, you, you can't you can't deal you can't eliminate it like in the video. You know? It's like you can't clone out flash, like you know. But um, it's never been an issue for me because obviously you're very aware of that issue. Yeah, good point. Good point. That was right, you want this, this has been a wealth of, 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 of information, knowledge. Oh, has, yeah, come has on, it been a bit boring or is, no, is not at all? all. Just trying, to process it. trying to process it all, and, and <laughs> it's after making me realize how terrible of a photographer I was for those. But you know wins. what? It's after making me actually kind of kind of miss, yeah, weddings. 
Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I kinda, I'd love to go shoot a wedding now. Do you know that? I do enjoy shooting them. I do. They're incredibly They're very ha- stressful. I'm telling you, for me, photograph. for me, right, being the second shooter at a wedding is the bee's knees and the yeah. cat's pajamas. Yeah. It is the least stressful, most rewarding thing yeah, you can so do. so enjoyable. Because, like, shooter number one, a.k.a. Ronan, has all the stress and all the pressure on him. Yeah. And anything that I do is bonus. <laughs> I just get to have a great time and be, be around happy people for a full day and, and the, work with a friend. And yeah. it's great. The best part, you flick open the, the door and you hand him the SD card at the end of the day like, exactly. bye-bye. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally That's the, the greatest part. thing that you can Give do. Give me my buddy. Here's the SD card. I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Are you two saying now you don't give me 100%? It's no, just, no, no, it's no, just give a you bit 100% of crack because, and no work. Because, no, no, it's 100%. 100%. But it's 100% crack. Well, <laughs> I love flicking you with SD at the I end of the day. That, yes. <laughs> and no, honestly, no, like, it, it is. If, if um, yeah, like, as, honestly, it's it's great because it's, there's no pressure on you. Not, not just no pressure. Like obviously you've got the pressure you've put on yourself because you want to do really well. You want to get shots and ideally you want to see some of your shots in, in the final d- d- delivered product. Um, but it's just, you know that shooter number one has all of the key images sorted and, you know, you're just there to kind of back up all of those shots almost and then it's kind of bad capture, though because I'm like second shooters doing all the work so I don't have to worry so like you we were basically all switched <laughs> off <laughs> neither of us are worrying <laughs> neither of us are getting the shots <laughs> that's kind of like the guy who said I thought you brought the rings no I thought you brought the rings yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I thought you them. got that I thought I yeah. thought that was uh, your no, job but that, that's for, that's brilliant but now being a second shooter it's it's lovely um, and it, it helps an awful lot because you get to see what's what you learn an awful lot you learn oh, you so learn much you learn so much and it so is much. fun it is really fun it is it's very fun weddings are fun right I suppose then we'll finish it up here um, here's a couple of things you can get to help you out the first one I'd recommend getting is photo mechanic and what photo mechanic does is it goes through your shots automatically and culls them for you it's very Ooh. accurate and very handy Go what away. I would recommend with photo mechanic um, is do it with export or bring all your photos onto your computer um, export a JPEG copy and then run the JPEGs through and it'll do it really quick because it takes no time at all to export a small JPEG out of Lightroom um, run them through it'll knock them out real quick and you'll be left with the the numbers of the raw files to edit and you can just zip through them real quick culling done the next thing I'd recommend is JPEG Mini which is a software that kicks all of the useless information out of your JPEGs, uh, reduces the file size dramatically and allows you to send them onto couples to upload them online and um, to share them anywhere and they're still nice and crispy and perfect. You'd be amazed how long it takes to upload photos for clients to review if you're exporting them full size. So what JPEG Mini does is just squash them down. I have squashed the 15 a megabyte JPEG down into a 700 kilobyte JPEG mm. and <laughs> zipped it up for no anyone way. with bad internet they'll appreciate that like so yeah, Sean it, it's, yeah, it's incredible me. yeah <laughs> um, I probably should have checked prices of these things they're not free um, you might be able to get free trials but I can assure you if you're thinking of getting into wedding photography they're worth the investment yeah, um, yeah I think, the uh, next I think thing if you're a professional that's w- well worth t- looking into 100% yeah, and if you're planning for the future, as we love to do, we love to future-proof. So it's definitely <laughs> boop, boop. worth doing. Yeah, we do. Um, the next one where JPEG Mini comes in handy is Pixie Set. So P-I-X-I-E-S-E-T. And what Pixie Set does, um, I think they have free subscriptions, but it's basically a really quick and snappy and lovely and elegant uh, online gallery where you can add all of the photographs um, your clients can order prints, canvas, wooden prints, metal prints, mugs, you name it. They can order it all directly through Pixie Set. Um, it goes straight to Loxley. 
in the UK and Loxley fulfill the orders, you just put in your markup. So say you want 10% per whatever. You don't have to lift a finger. All the printing is Very done. Very handy. The ordering is done by the client and you're it lo- it's super presentable. So it's a really quick and handy way to, to show the photos to your client. They can also download um, the full size copies and to share it with their friends, all they have to do is zip a link on. So super handy. Um, another handy one to have uh, if you're considering staying at wedding photography or going into any form of photography full time is 17 hats and what 17 hats is it's a C I definitely have 17 hats (laughs) Kev is sorry that was terrible it was true I I, I have plenty of hats that was absolutely horrendous (laughs) yeah I'm sorry continue what 17 hats is it's um, a client management system or like a, a project management system and basically you can put up a form on your website or make a link that you can send to someone they put in their details and it gets loaded into the system automatically uh, through which you can send automatic emails invoices contracts uh, you name it and i think it's it's less than 200 euro for the year um if you are looking at getting something like 17 hats let me know and i can actually get you a discount on it because i'm a user so if you do want to get something like 17 hats to manage all your bookings and like it'll work for a uh, managing client in terms of different photo shoots in your studio um, any brands you work with like it's it's a client management system and um, it does invoicing everything it's brilliant so yeah 17 hats would be it and i definitely recommend beanies this time of year and then as we transition into spring and summer i definitely look at like flat caps and okay. potentially uh, snapbacks. Okay. So that's Noted. just worth no- worth noting as well. That was probably the most valuable input of this whole episode. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, just... look, Ronan, that's been lovely. Um, I mean, for anyone who is lo- looking at taking on this daunting task for the first time, that's as good I as would get. imagine... They're, they're going to be set up. Uh, mm. the, the, anyone who listens to this who's about to shoot a wedding for the first time, they will breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah. Um, and that's thanks to you, my friend. They should listen so, to it. So. Re- re- so. Listen to it. Yeah, that was Genuinely, such a I mean, like, I think we, this needs to be tagged with, I'm shooting my first wedding, how can I help? Or yeah. help me. <laughs> Something like that. Because honestly, <laughs> like, this will this will help people a lot. And if, um, if you're a listener and if you know of someone or a friend or a rela- relative who is going shooting their first wedding, send them on this episode because Ronan has gone through everything from start to finish, softwares that'll help you out, shot lists, gear, the mistakes we all made. You got you got first-hand real information from two absolute noobs in the form of me and Kevin. So, <laughs> I mean, about the mistakes we, did, we made. So, yeah, this episode is absolute gold. Thank you, Ronan. You're very welcome. I hope someone does find it useful. I will finish on the point though, the final point. Yes. Do not work for free. And if you're not confident, send the wedding on to a professional because the professionals are hurting at the moment. I know for a fact I am. It's it's looking like it's going to be two years without any work. So yes, I would encourage everyone to shoot a wedding. Um, I would encourage everyone to do it properly. But if it's a big task and you're not comfortable share the love with the pros who are struggling at the moment and you can even share and the love Ronan by HD do Photography not work uh, for free is it? ever <laughs> ronanhdphotography.com or .ie that's great advertisement from the leprechaun in the background there do you hear yeah. that are you real far away from your mic or what <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> step up to your microphone you cloud <laughs> I'm, I'm that's here you subliminable s- advertising is it <laughs> oh, ronanhdphotography.com that's where I've you should I've actually I have a new everybody. website on the way as well, lads. Do you? Exciting times. Ooh. And Ooh. actually, funny enough, it has snapbacks and all on it. <laughs> Class. Uh, it's a little project I'm working on. But anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found that helpful. That's been episode 39 of the Tripod. Um, Maybe a bit rushed and convoluted, but no. all the information is there. So I would encourage everyone to listen enjoy and then share it with everyone for the love yeah, of tell, god just tell your friends it it's like, there. if you're listening to this podcast and you hear my voice tell at least five people send them a link and tell them to tell their friends 
Okay. You're all tripod ambassadors. That's man, how it works. Stage. Yeah. Like, come like, on. That, that's how these things work. You know, it's word of mouth and it's telling your friends and it's sharing it online and it costs nothing. And it's a lovely thing to do. And uh, look, I would do it for you. If you had a podcast, yes, even you listening right now, if you had a podcast, I'd share it. So do the same. Okay, Kev. And will you also join the Patreon so that we can get enough money to send Kev on a podcast hosting course? <laughs> You're a dick. This is be- <laughs> and if you bleep that out, I'm going to call you a dick even more. I'm going to call you a dick for the rest of the day. <laughs> dick. Ladies and gentlemen, this oh, has been episode it. 39 of the Joy Pod. Dick. <laughs> I have been Ronan, Sean has been Sean, and Kevin has been agitated. And Ronan Thanks has been listening. a dick. <laughs> As always, we'll see Love you next all. Tuesday. See you later. <laughs> oh, good luck. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Tripod. If you'd like to support us, please visit our Patreon. And don't forget, folks, we do have all social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can join us in our deadly Facebook community group as well. And please leave a review. Reviews help, so leave a review. Yurt.